Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's portably monetized low budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe. All right, uh, today we're gonna talk about topic 6.2 and the law of gravitation. Here are your learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the relationship between gravitational and centripetal forces. Apply Newton's law of gravitation to the motion of an object in circular orbit about a point mass. Determine the resultant gravitational field strength due to two bodies. And finally, solve problems involving gravitational force, field strength, orbital speed, and period. Uh, and these will be via handout or perhaps problems from your textbook. Okay, so here we have uh, two masses. We have a larger mass and a smaller mass. And these are separated by a distance, which we are calling here R. Uh, these two masses are exerting a force on each other. And in fact, all masses in the universe are attracted to each other. Uh, if you are standing next to someone right now, you are gravitationally attracted to them. And the larger their mass, the more gravitation. Uh, the magnitude of force will depend on three factors, uh, one, of which, one of which I've already hinted at. Uh, the first one is mass. So our attractive force is proportional to the mass of each object, meaning the larger the mass, the greater the gravitational uh, force. Second, our attractive force is inversely proportional to the square of the radius between the centers of mass. So we have here what's called an inverse square law. Uh, third, it's depend dependent on a coefficient <clears throat> coefficient called the gravitational constant, which we call g. Okay, so here's our formula then, putting those three factors together. Uh, gravitational force is equal to g times the mass of our larger body times the mass of our smaller body divided by radius squared. Uh, our gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Uh, and if you could, if you wanted to, just derive that unit right here by uh, dividing both sides of the equation by the inverse of this value. All right, so M then, capital M, is the mass of one of the bodies. Doesn't really matter if it's larger or smaller, but why not say larger? Why not? Uh, small m is the mass of one of, one of the bodies, the other body. Uh, might as well make it smaller. And R, again, is a distance between the center's mass of both bodies. Okay, so gravitational field strength is defined as the amount of gravitational force per unit mass acting on a small test, test mass placed at a point around an object. Okay, so according to Newton's second law, gravitational acceleration then is equal to force divided by mass. Ideally, uh, our test mass will be as small as possible. So, uh, gravitational acceleration g, again, equal to force divided by mass. You might also recognize this as a unit occasionally used for gravitational force. This is going to give a newton per kilogram. Since we know that gravitational force is given by this, uh, if we use a little substitution, we're going to get this new equation where g is equal to our gravitational constant times the mass of our large body divided by our radius squared. So in other words, the mass of our test mass will cancel out, okay, using substitution. Okay, so here is your gravitational acceleration. And now we can calculate gravitational acceleration based on the distance from an object. Up to this point, we've kind of skipped that. Okay, so our gravitational fields are depicted as radial vector lines, assuming that our body is spherical, and that is usually the case. So we'd be looking at a, a large body, typically a planet or a moon or possibly a star. So the lines show the direction of force on a test mass placed at any point around the object. So if I put a test mass here, for example, it's going to be accelerated along the arrow of my field line. So if we zoom in on our round object, if we zoom enough, it's going to appear like a plane, a flat plane. 
uh, more or less, if we're on a planet, there may be a mountain or two in the way, but uh, it'll be flat-ish. So our field lines are perpendicular then to the surface of our object, uh, pointed toward the center. So if you follow the field line, you're gonna go, go to the center of mass. In this case, it would be the center of the planet. Okay, we're gonna take a quick look at orbital velocities now. And your task, if you want it, is to find a general equation for orbital velocity. So uh, you could pause the video and just see what you can come up with. Should be fun, a good time. I'll hum the Jeopardy theme music. Doon, doon, doon. Okay, that's enough. Uh, okay, I assume you have paused the video and you found your equation. So here it is. Uh, we need to start by equating gravitational and centripetal force. So we should be kind of used to this in IB physics at this point. Uh, it's a common physics skill and requirement uh, to equate forces. Uh, so we start by equating gravitational and accelerational force. Uh, sorry, gravitational and centripetal force. Solve for velocity, and we'll note that the mass of the satellite cancels out. So here's step one. And step two, we solve this new equation for velocity. Step three, or rather velocity squared, uh, take the square root of both sides, and that's going to give us velocity is equal to the square root of the gravitational constant time the, times the mass of the body about which we're orbiting uh, divided by the distance to that body. Okay, so next question, what is the relationship between orbital velocity and distance? Uh, we should recognize from this equation that uh, velocity will be inversely proportional to the square root of radius. Okay, so as our distance increases, our velocity then is going to decrease. And it's going to decrease uh, according to this proportionality. <clears throat> All right, uh, so next up, the period of an object in orbit uh, is going to look like this. We need to start with a previous step, uh, and it's this one. So we have velocity squared being equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of our large object about which we are orbiting, uh, divided by our orbital distance, okay? So we're going to substitute velocity for something we saw in our previous lecture. Uh, perhaps I'll drop a link in here. Uh, in which velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. So this is the circumference of circle, a circle divided by the amount of time required to traverse one circular path. Okay, so we do a little more. Uh, so we expand our exponents and get rid of the parentheses, and we get this form of the equation, and now we can just solve for our period, and we get this. So our period then is going to be equal to 2 pi uh, multiplied by the square root of radius cubed divided by the gravitational constant times the mass of our large body. Okay, uh, so we can find the period uh, if we know the velocity and we know the radius. Uh, here's a little faster way to go about it. Uh, but if we don't know the velocity, then this equation will work. Okay, and that does it for our presentation. So just a recap of your learning objectives right here. And now it is time to move on to solving problems involving gravitational force, field strength, orbital speed, and orbital period. I recommend working through examples in your textbook uh, or possibly a handout if your teacher has one available. And my sources for this presentation, as usual, the excellent physics for the IB diploma by K. K. A. Tsokos, and the, this was prepared using Google Slides, Latex, and Adobe Illustrator, and probably another bit of software too. Remember, importantly, do not click like, do not subscribe. There is the bell, which means I'll have students here momentarily. Have a great day.